Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia has actually gone ahead with its threats and it has imposed a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Uh, remember, uh, we were talking about Russia, Ukraine since the last uh, uh, about uh, one week. More than that, uh, so finally Russia has actually gone on to attack Ukraine, marking the most violent phase that Europe has ever seen after World War II. Now, interstate river water disputes, a uh, perpetual topic in the uh, UPSC syllabus, hence it's very, very important. Then drones being used as weapon systems. And then Netaji and uh, Netaji's memory in Moirang. What does Moirang have to do with Netaji and his relation to the Indian National Army? We'll discuss this, not so important. The most important topic for the day, working of tribunals. Uh, this also keeps constantly getting asked uh, in the UPSC mains. So please uh, focus on this one topic. And then Academic Bank of Credit Scheme. This is a scheme that was announced by Ministry of Education as a part of the new education policy. Okay, so moving on, the first uh, topic that we will discuss is Russia has launched a all-out invasion of Ukraine by land, air and sea, which should be the biggest attack by one state against another in Europe since World War II. Okay, it is both a land, air and sea attack. Now, uh, you see that uh, uh, Russia also controls this particular area. Okay, uh, sorry. Russia controls this area, which is Crimea. It occupied this particular area in 2014. So Russia can actually, and this is the Sea of Azov. So Russia actually goes for a sea-based attack as well as an entire land-based attack and an air-based attack. So these are the two separatist regions of uh, Ukraine. This area is known as Donbass. And uh, even within Donbass, you have... Uh, Donetsk and then Luhansk, which are the two breakaway factions. Now, Russian missiles rained down on Ukrainian cities and Ukraine reported columns of troops pouring across its borders into eastern uh, Kharkiv, Luhansk regions, all of them, and landing at sea from the cities of Odisha and Mariupol in the south. I have uh, stuck a picture where you can see Mariupol and Odisha over here. So, please uh, realize that. Explosions could also be heard before dawn in the Ukrainian capital. In fact, uh, it is said that the Russians are very close to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. While there was gunfire near the main airport. Okay. Now, we have seen the way uh, Mr. Putin has actually justified the Russian attack. He says that in order to serve Russia security conditions uh, sec in order to shore up Russia security there is a need to prevent the expansion of NATO from expanding eastwards however uh, NATO has gone on ever since the collapse of USSR to form new partners in the form of Lithuania Latvia Estonia and all uh, even Hungary Poland all these countries actually join the NATO which makes uh, it possible to establish American missiles and defense systems in these countries. And hence, uh, this actually proves to be a threat to Russia. So, Russia wants to address its security situation. Also earlier, Russia had expressed concern over the expansion of NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization into Eastern Europe and former Soviet republics, especially Ukraine. Also, President Putin had earlier expressed concern that Ukraine has the knowledge and desire to obtain nuclear weapons. Please remember that uh, after the disintegration of uh, Soviet Union through the Nan-Lugar Agreement, through the Nan-Lugar Agreement, uh, the nuclear weapons of the successor states 
of ussr you know uh, were uh, submitted to russia okay uh, all the nuclear weapons which were there in kazakhstan which were there in ukraine which are all a part of the erstwhile ussr were uh, returned back to russia okay uh, next what has the west done in response to this particular act of russia which has carried out a full scale invasion germany has halted the certification of the uh, 750 mile pipeline that connects russia directly to germany okay uh, the united states the european union britain australia canada japan all of them announce plans to target wealthy individuals and banks through sanctions all of them are imposing sanctions on russia uh, there was also a reposting of additional us troops in such a way that the baltic nations are protected similarly uk is also rebalancing its troops to eastern europe in order to safeguard uh, these countries now the krishna river water dispute the karnataka government has moved the indian supreme court seeking setting up of a bench to hear a plea relating to the dispute over the allocation of water of krishna river flowing in the states of maharashtra karnataka andhra pradesh and telangana these are the four states through which the krishna river flows and hence uh, as a part of the interstate river water disputes there was a tribunal that was set up and this particular tribunal was responsible for allocating waters of river krishna earlier now the supreme court in 2011 actually restrained the central government from publishing the final orders of the krishna river water uh, tribunal now unless and until the final orders of this tribunal are published they can't be implemented so what it needs is that orders need to be published and only then can they be implemented however the supreme court has restricted the government from publishing these orders in the gazette and hence the implementation is also not possible karnataka had sought the vacation of this order and its early implementation karnataka wants this uh, order to be implemented actually whatever the tribunal has done it wants that particular order to be put in place and implemented the publication of the tribunal order is a necessary precondition for its implementation as we had discussed according to the interstate river water disputes act now what did that tribunal say earlier in 2013 the tribunal had modified the final order from 2010 to allot surplus water to karnataka maharashtra and andhra pradesh see by 2014 the bifurcation of andhra had not happened it was one united state of andhra pradesh the tribunal because the supreme court had stayed the particular order the tribunal had modified its its final order to allot surplus water uh to karnataka maharashtra and andhra pradesh however following the bifurcation of united andhra pradesh and telangana from sorry of uh, unified andhra pradesh to telangana and andhra pradesh the government had moved the supreme court uh, challenging the krishna river water dispute tribunal tribunals allocation now because before 2014 andhra pradesh was one uh, state and hence whatever allocation was made by the krishna river water disputes tribunal was applicable to that scenario but after 2014 andhra split up and hence that particular uh, tribunal's verdict would not be valid is what is the contention of the telangana government and the andhra pradesh government now karnataka had argued that thousands of crores of its dam and irrigation projects to provide water to the parched northern areas the northern areas of karnataka 
were stalled for all these years because of the 2010 order to not publish Krishna River Water Disputes decisions in the official gazette. Now, Karnataka has actually been losing thousands of crores of money, which uh, was uh, actually a way to provide water to the northern part of uh, the Karnataka region. Now, this is not being able to be implemented because the tribunal's uh, verdict has not been published in the Gazette. Karnataka said that the dispute raised by Andhra Pradesh and Telangana was between them as to what split it would uh, be and did not concern the Telanga, uh, Karnataka itself. So, that is Karnataka's uh, argument. Now, what is the Inter- Interstate River Water Disputes Act? Now, uh, Interstate River Water Disputes Act was actually enacted under Article 262, which says that the Parliament can enact a law in order to uh, in order to ensure the proper usage and distribution of river uh, resources. However, uh, the Act also allows the Parliament to remove the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in the cases of river water disputes. Uh, If a state government makes a request regarding any water dispute and the central government is of the opinion that the water dispute cannot be settled by negotiations, then a water dispute tribunal is constituted for the adjudication of the water dispute. Now, this was the original 1956 Act. However, you know, cases were happening in such a way because there is no time limit for anything none of the cases were getting solved and uh, the tribunal itself was not being set up because this particular act says that if it cannot be settled by negotiations so the negotiations keep going on and on and hence no tribunal was being set up this particular act was hence amended in 2002 the tribunal has to be constituted within one year of the request from the concerned state. The tribunal should give the award within three years and in some exceptional cases within five years. See, they have given strict limits for the tribunal as to when it has to publish the order. Okay, And then if the award is not immediately implemented, the concerned parties can see clarification within three months. However, states could still approach the Supreme Court through Article, this is the problem with the law, that despite the parliament uh, restricting the powers of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has accepted taking petitions under special leave petition, under Article 136 of the Indian Constitution. So, even those provisions that the Constitution allows the parliament to discard from the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, Supreme Court has still taken it up Uh, and hence the jurisdiction of Supreme Court is extremely large. Now, drone drops weapons in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Recently, actually uh, even some time back there was another case of one of the Indian Air Force bases getting attacked by uh, drones. Now, three boxes of arms and ammunition dropped by a drone on Wednesday night were recovered from Treva village in Jammu it seems. Now, earlier drones were used for the first time to drop explosives triggering blasts inside the Air Force Station's technical area in Jammu. This is a very important uh, issue that happened. Drone attacks and concerns. Over the past two years, drones have been deployed regularly by Pakistan-based outfits to smuggle. I'm sorry. uh, Over the past uh, two years, Drones have been deployed regularly by Pakistan-based outfits to smuggle arms, ammunition, drugs into Indian territory as drones fly low and they cannot be detected by a radar system because of this low altitude at which they fly. According to the government figures, 167 drone sightings were recorded along the border with Pakistan in 2019 and in 2020 there were 77 such sightings. That's a huge number. 167 drone sightings along the border with Pakistan. Okay. Now, 
uh, the, one of the problems with that is that it flow is very low and it cannot be detected by the radar other uh, issues are that okay drones are quickly becoming security threats particularly in conflict areas where non state actors are active and easy easily have access to technology now uh, example is that wind drone attacks on saudi aramco crude oil production and this uh, actually shot up the prices of crude oil by how terribles advantages of drones drones are actually cheaper in comparison to conventional uh, weapons and can achieve far more destructive deaths uh, uh the biggest advantage that comes from by using a drone for combat purpose is that it can be controlled from a remote distance and does not affect the uh, does not affect any member of the attacking side uh unlike having direct hand to hand combat drones do not involve any direct combat and it can be remotely controlled uh next it it is also easily uh, procurable and easy to operate because um, yeah in uh, drone systems you don't need heavy extensive uh, understanding to be able to operate a drone netaji's memories in moirong okay uh, one of uh, ins members grandson is contesting the manipur elections the state elections which are coming up okay now moirong is nothing but it's a small town which is 45 kilometers from imphal and was chosen as the headquarters of the ina by netaji bos after they liberated a part of manipur from british rule and established the provincial independent government hence moirong was the headquarters of ina also recently the government has decided to install a grand statue of netaji subhash bose at the india gate to commemorate his 125th birth anniversary subhash bose was born on 23rd january 1987 in katakorisa bengal province in 1919 he had cleared the indian civil services he in fact got uh, the indian civil services rank 4 and he resigned later he was highly influenced by vivekananda's messages vivekananda spoke about cosmopolitan world order uh, vasudeva kutumbakam and hence uh, he considered uh, vivekananda as his uh, spiritual guru his political mentor was mr chitranjan das desh nayak i believe or desh bandhu one of them he was the editor Subhash Bose was the editor for uh, Chitranjan Das's forward newspaper. Later, he also started uh, his own newspaper known as Swaraj. When Subhash Bose was actually a part of the INC, he did a lot of very prominent things. He stood for Purna Swaraj. Unlike uh, it was not Birkenhead's uh, challenge, uh, resulted in uh, the Nehru report, which was framed by Motilal Nehru. now the nehru report actually had a proposal for dominion status and not full independence however it was uh, subhash bose and uh, jawala nehru who wanted purna swaraj okay uh, he and uh, jawala nehru and srinivas ayengar they also formed this independence for india league which put the demand for complete independence shrinivas ayengar was the first president of this uh, independence for india league and he also took part in the salt satyagraha in a major manner and vehemently opposed the suspension of the civil disobedience movement and signing of this gandhi irwin pact uh, this was signed before the second round table conference in the 1930s he was closely associated with the left parties in congress left politics in congress along with uh, jawaharlal nehru and m n roy bose won the congress presidential elections at haripura session in 1938 please read uh, all the important congress sessions including the ones uh, that start from 1936 37 38 Again in 1939, he won at Tripuri, 
against Gandhi's candidate Pattabhi Sitaramaya. However, Gandhi ji did not want uh, Netaji Bose to become the president of the Congress again. And uh, hence, uh, due to these differences, Bose resigned uh, the Congress and left. After resigning and leaving, he formed the forward bloc. Uh, whose uh, idea was to actually consolidate the political leftists. Now, the Indian National Army, you know, some of the important points that you have to know about the Indian National Army is that uh, uh, Indian National Army was controlled, it was actually initially set up by Mr. Mohan Singh, who uh, formed an army full of comp- Indian prisoners of war of the British Indian Army and who were captured by Japan in the Malayan and Singapore campaigns. Now, uh, uh, Subhash Bose actually reached uh, Japanese control Singapore from Germany and from there he started his Delhi Shallow movement and then announced the formation of Azad Hind government. Uh, through this uh, Indian National Army. Okay. Now, what was the INA? The INA was the Indian National Army. Now, this Indian National Army was actually started by Mr. Mohan Singh and it comprised of all those Indian prisoners of war of the British Indian Army who were captured by Japan in the Malayan and the Singapore uh, campaign. So, during the World War II. And using these people, Mohan Singh actually started his own Indian National Army. The idea was to use this Indian National Army and to bring India its independence. Uh, Subhash Bose actually reached uh, Singapore from Germany. And from there, he issued his Delhi Shallow slogan. And uh, he announced the formation of this provincial, uh, uh, provisional government of free India, which is also known as the Asad Hind government. Okay. It is also known as the Arzi Hukumat e Azad Hind. It was supported by the Axis powers, who were Japan, Germany, and Italy. Okay. And their allies, not by the uh, Allied powers. The INA fought allied forces in 1944 inside the borders of India and Impal and Burma. Nowhere else did they fight them. Uh, these places were inside the Indian borders and hence they fought them over here. Okay, next. The most important uh, news article for the day. The Supreme Court stays, uh, says the Tribunal Act of 2021 goes against its own order. Now, the Supreme Court said that the government's move to introduce a statute last year on key tribunals merely days after the court struck down an identical law may amount to dishonoring its own judgment. Now, what is this Tribunal Reforms uh, Act? Uh, Tribunal Reforms Act, actually, it varies the conditions of service of tribunals and it uh, fixes the limits on the tenure of these tribunals. and the other uh, payments of these tribunals and the removal of the tribunals, appointment of the tribunal, all of that, okay? Now, earlier we had a tribunal reforms ordinance. Uh, it was quashed by the Supreme Court and said that it was not adequate and uh, the government needs to make changes. Now, what was the court's argument? Uh, the court held that some provisions were unjust of that ordinance some of the provisions were unjust. Like, the term of office of four years is lower than the minimum of five years, directed by the Supreme Court and various judgments. This is a lower tenure and it will again cause emptiness and vacancy in tribunals. Now, the Supreme Court has also held that the minimum age limit required for uh, appointment of the members, which is 50 years, it might take away the young talent that can get attracted to tribunals and judiciary. Now, please know what the Tribunal Reforms Act of 2021 is. Now, it comprises of a such come selection committee who will actually search out uh, people who are capable of getting into tribunals as members and expert members 
uh, judicial members and expert uh, members uh, and on the basis of the recommendations of this particular committee the central government would appoint chairpersons and members of tribunals uh okay and then okay the composition of these committees who are the search and selection committee search come selection committees are it can come it comprises of the chief justice of india or a judge nominated by him two central government nominated secretaries okay sitting or uh, outgoing chairperson or a retired supreme court judge or a retired chief justice of a high court in these scenarios sitting chairperson will be a part of the search and selection committee in case of appointment of a member of a tribunal then outgoing chairperson will be there as a part of the uh, selection committee in case of appointment of a chairperson of a tribunal now uh in case of retired supreme court judge and uh, retired uh, high court chief justice they are a part of this uh, search come selection committee in case of a tribunal share person seeking reappointment now when it's a case of uh, the chair person of the tribunal getting reappointed then we have uh, a retired supreme court judge also who turns out to be a part of the search come selection committee now according to the new act what is the tenure the act still continues to provide for a four year tenure with the provision for reappointment and an upper age limit of 70 years for chairperson and 67 years for other members this blatantly goes against the argument that supreme court put forward saying that uh, at least 5 year term has to be given and this 50 year uh, uh barrier it's uh, taking away many talented people from judiciary now abolishing abolishing of appellate bodies and transfer of functions of these appellate bodies the bill has abolishes certain appellate bodies and transfers their functions to existing judicial bodies such as appellate tribunal under cinematograph act airport appellate tribunal appellate tribunal under protection of land varieties and farmers rights act so several such act uh, tribunals have been done away with and their powers have been either transferred to high court or supreme court or to some other tribunal now uh hence uh, uh supreme court has commented on the actions of the government because its new act actually clearly going against its argument during the uh, ordinance discussion academic bank of credit scheme now this is a very important uh, scheme because the new education policy had a very flexible system when it came to finishing of courses uh, hence this particular uh, academic bank of credit also this implements that flexibility now uh, academic bank of credit is actually set up by this university grants commission ugc which is the regulator for uh, universities in india under the uh, academic uh, bank bank of credit uh, scheme students will be given multiple entry and existing exit options into current courses into current courses uh, why uh, whenever uh, you know there are some problems for the student he can opt out when he opts out he will get some credits uh, regarding the subjects that he has finished uh and then he can always enter back at whichever time things are better this enables the student to leave a degree or a course and get a corresponding certification and rejoin studies after a certain time and be able to start from where he had left the studies it will also provide students with the flexibility to move between institutes you finish uh, certain credits from one institute then after that you save your credits and then in the second uh, educational institute you can continue from where you left 
In other words, under ABC, a student can earn a degree from any higher educational institution with multiple entry and exit uh, options. Instead of spending three years in a college, student can seamlessly switch over from one college to another. Uh, instead of spending the entire three years at one go in one college, in order to earn a degree, a student will now have to hold a certain number of credits is what is needed not to be on the campus for as long as possible. For example, if a BCom student studies in one college, he or she can change college after one year. He or she can join the same course after a small break. You can join the same course in some other college, you know, depending upon his requirement. Hence, it is a very flexible scheme. Now, ABC will keep records of the academic credits of a student. It will not accept any credit course document directly from students for any course they might be pursuing, but only from higher educational institutions. All the uh, uh, credit course documents uh, that they have done, you know, that will be obtained directly from the college itself and not from students. This will ensure uh, that there are no fake degrees which are coming in. Uh, fake certification and fake credits that will come in. It is only given by the higher educational institute and what the student is giving has no significance if he is trying to uh, convince that he has done certain credits.